I get to torque some mains down. Yay! In the previous GSX video, you watched me coat the inside of a 6-bolt 4G63 engine block with an oil and water repellent paint called Gliptol 1201. A few people complained that I didn't show the after results in the same video along with the coating process. I actually didn't do that on the video where I coated the cylinder head either because I didn't have access to the facility that did all the baking. The previous two videos on this topic were always intended to be nothing more than the application process. They're a demonstration of how I do this for automotive use on cast aluminum and cast iron parts. If you're going to use any kind of paint as a crankcase coating, there are several mandatory stages of this process that you have to go through if you want that paint to stick. They have to be done in order and there are long waiting periods in between some of those steps. Preparation is key to a good finish. The coatings take weeks to dry properly, and the drying time is the second most important part of this job. You don't want uncured solvents in the paint to bubble and gas out in the oven because it'll ruin the finish. It's such a time sucker that it's just not practical to cover everything in one video. Now that it's had adequate time to dry out and the mains have been torqued, I've got an appointment to go get it baked. So I'm going to load this thing up into the truck and take it for a drive. This is going to be the fastest this block has traveled in many years. There's a fantastic crew of coatings experts who have been supporting the DSM and Evo community for nearly a decade now. Many of you with the DSM Tuners account who frequent the forums or who read Gearbox magazine or who have been to a DSM Evo GTR shootout in Norwalk, Ohio or who watched the 21st annual DVD of the shootout and saw them being interviewed know exactly who I'm talking about. The people I'm about to visit have owned and raced DSMs for many years so a lot of you may know them already. But, they're not just a DSM shop. I guess the best way to put it is, they're motorsports friendly. They've done work on just about every other kind of thing, whether it has an engine or not. They coat parts for boats, four-wheelers, industrial machinery, tools, even cast iron lawn furniture. You'd be surprised at how popular restoring that kind of stuff is these days. But anyway, one of their specialties is stripping, coating, and rebuilding brake calipers. And they're full service on that kind of job. There's no project too big or small for them to handle. A few years back, Detective Coating moved to my neck of the woods. Well, sort of. It's like, it's through the woods, down the river a bit, across the swamp, through a dozen red lights, past the twin stumps, then you take a left at the giant wooden badger and a right at the fork in the road. You'll know it when you see it, you can't miss it. I put links in the description to their website and social media for those of you who can't follow Southern Directions. But my first order of business is to Oof. play with the shop dog. Woof! Woof! What's up, Talon? What's up, Talon? Come on! Come on, let's go wicked chat! What's up, Talon? I can do this all day and this one will let you. Trust me. Let's find and meet the hard-working people who keep the lights on and the wheels turning in this place. I'm Justin. I'm the owner and operator here. I do all the powder coating and typically you'll talk to one of us three on the phone. We kind of do it all here. Each of us takes on each other's role when needs be. Uh, this is Bailey. She does a lot of the small sandblasting and the masking and plugging. And Adam does the big sandblasting stuff in the booth, all the furniture and the kind of secondhand man that if I need a hand with anything, pulling him to help us. <laughs> all the right on. Chemical stripping and whatnot too, yeah. Oh, they give you that stuff? Mm -hmm. I get it all. Three, let's do it. Right. You need to renegotiate your contract, my man. As it comes <laughs> in the door, till the time it goes out of the door, one of us is going to have a hand on it somewhere. Yeah. So, right on. Yep. And 100% of the coding done by Justin. <laughs> Always. Oh, yeah. yeah. Take pride in that. Yep. <laughs> yeah. You got a very cool dog. Yeah, he's the DSM dog, Talon. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, it's kind of perfect, isn't it? Skitch, 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 skitch. So, what are the brands of uh, of powders that you use? Every, mostly Prismatic though. Um, mm -hmm. They're the highest quality and biggest selection. So, how about the types of powders you do? Uh, of course, the regular old powder coating stuff, but you mm -hmm. also do ceramics? Yeah, ceramic, uh, we use Cerakote. It's a high heat application for 2,000 degrees. We use on a bunch of turbocharged applications, mostly the DSM Evo and then turbo Hondas. I mean, anything that sees heat, 
it, it's a good insulator to keep the heat in and get it out faster. This is a CTSV manifold. This is in our silver Cerakote, capable at 2,000 degrees. Um, before this, it gets sandblasted, so it has an etch into the metal so that the Cerakote can bond to it, so it holds up for a long period of time. And then over here, we have a force performance intake pipe that's coated gloss black. And we also install the fittings. They're welded on, same with the valve covers over here. We have a, this is our high gloss red. And this also has the aluminum baffles welded in so that we can make sure there's no debris or um, sludge or anything oh, underneath cool. the factory baffles so you don't have to worry about anything contaminating your oil. That would look great on my Gallant. What are the ranges of your ovens? Yeah, they'll go um, all the way up to 600 degrees we've cured some stuff at. Uh, typically it stays around 380 to 400 to cure the powder coating though. Awesome. And I guess now you can also say you've uh, assisted with the glyph hull coating. Yes, that is a new one. It's a for new us. one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not a not a common thing, but uh, but you know, man, it's definitely something that people don't want to do in their home ovens, yeah. and they need to rely on an industrial oven and somebody professional that can ensure Absolutely. that it's done right. That is not something you're going to want to do at home. The chemicals and the smell of it are going to be pretty toxic for you. Yeah, keep that away from food. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I previously said bake it at 280 degrees Fahrenheit for two hours. That's 137 degrees Celsius if you're a Fahrenheit. -er. There we are at 280. We'll cut it off in two hours and let it cool slowly in the oven. This is our brake caliper disassembly table. Here we have a set of Audi S6 calipers. It's a six piston front caliper. And then the rear caliper is a single piston with an electronic e brake built in. And this is where we tear them down, they get all the pistons, seals, dust boots, um, all the hardware removed. So there's nothing left of them but the bare shell. And over here we have uh, Focus RS calipers and Nissan GTR calipers in the back. Um, we also have Evo and SRT8 calipers as well. They've got a 40 horse rotary screw compressor, blast pot, and a smaller blast cabinet that's right next to another blast cabinet that's big enough to park a truck in a chemical bath that I don't want to point my camera at because it will dissolve my memory card, and a myriad of different kinds of caps, plugs, cork-like things that help them ensure the powder coat ends up only where they want it. It takes a special kind of focus to do this right. Heck, half of these things look the same to me. I don't know that I've got what it takes to pick the right one. This is the area where parts are coated using the GEMA OptiFlex 2 powder coat system, which is the top shelf coating solution for applying the powder coat before the parts are baked. When they do a brake job, they will disassemble and clean all components to the bare metal, coat and assemble the parts with new seals and oil rings. On parts with raised letters, they can do multicolored coats, which are a popular option on valve covers and some braking systems. So while the block is baking, let's go take a look at the DSMs that are being worked on. Well, there's a 4G63 hiding out right there. Yeah. All right. As you can tell, it's obvious they've got the exact same kind of illness that I do. It takes creativity to remain in a constant state of improvement, and we always want more and to make it better. I was happy to see this monster being taken to the next level. This is the life of every gearhead. Looks like everyone here has an all-wheel drive turbo import project car. I mean, I get it. The all-wheel drive launch and the turbo acceleration bit me too. Uh-oh, someone brought a Subaru. Just kidding. Got a Scooby snack. They all may have all-wheel drive turbo performance in the blood, but they still do discriminating work on any kind of car or thing with or without an engine in it. It's about time to go back and pull my block out of the oven. Don't you love that movie magic that saves you all the baking and cool off time? During the baking process, the pores of the block open up and the paint gets gooey enough to anchor itself deep inside the pores of the metal. 280 degrees Fahrenheit is higher than your coolant should ever get. Gliptol can burn and blister at temperatures over 300 degrees Fahrenheit, much higher and the powder coat can start to turn to goo again, so 280 is a safe temperature. Looks to me like the finish on the block held up really well despite all the stinkiness that was in there. And uh, it's a lot darker of a shade than it was originally. Yeah. It seems to have a little bit more gloss to it. The interesting thing is, is right here, I only did one coat on the suitcase handles. And, um, oh wow. That's dust. Just dust. Okay, cool. I was going to say it looked like it thinned out. But it looks great.
Time to take this thing home. Ouch, ow, ow, ouch, ouch, hot, 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 ow, 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 ouch, 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 burn, 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 ouch, ouch, just gonna warn gloves coming through. Ouch, 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 just kidding. Really, it was baked yesterday. I see that, the magic of video editing. Thank you, Detective Cody, for helping me with this stage of the project. I'd better give these things back so they can do this again for the next person crazy enough to do this. My next mission is to get this thing home and up on an engine stand so that I can wash it out and prepare a place to put it back together again. This video is intended to answer how I dealt with baking my parts, and I wanted to address this topic specifically and to introduce you to some really cool people. 170,000 people have watched my work on this unusual process so far, and because of the attention it's receiving, I'm at a stage where some experiments are in order because of the interest this topic has received. It adds value to the time you've already spent watching my videos, and it might help you make better decisions about whether or not any of this is of any benefit to your goals. While one part of me detests everything about how video production has slowed my progress down, I know how much these videos mean to all of you, so I accept that grind and produce this content anyway. This poses an issue for me that most of you won't ever have to deal with in your assemblies. When you assemble an engine, your parts, your tools, and your workspace must all be spotlessly clean. Foreign materials should always be minimized. Any area is easy to keep clean for a short period of time, but over a long period of time, eliminating foreign material takes work. Because of how long it will take to film and document my assembly, I'll be building a makeshift clean room inside of my garage. Nothing too fancy, and it's not intended to be perfect or anything, but it should be adequate for my needs. I'm going to do some experiments and some destructive testing in the next video in order to keep these video topics focused. There's not really a whole lot more about baking it that I can share outside of what the finished product looks like. I think it looks great. Despite the soft, rubbery feel of this finish, and I'm sorry that you can't feel that over the internet, really, it's extremely smooth and shiny. You might notice that all the gasket surfaces, machined flange surfaces, and machined areas adjacent to oiled bearing journals, as well as a small ring around the combustion chambers, are not coated. There are multiple reasons why I did this this way. There's no paint misaligning parts because of paint being stuck between them. I don't want the coating to wick oil away from bearing journals or cylinder walls, and really I don't know if it'll even do that. Remember, I'm a Gliptol noob myself. This is my first run at this. Finally, to get even with all the people who accused me of being OCD, I left an uncoated section on the number one main cap. I also did it near the bolt head on the number three thrust main, because we'll spend a lot of time there later as well, and I'm sure you guys are going to see it. It might drive some of you crazy, but in doing this, I pay homage to my small amount of American Indian blood. Pay close attention to symmetrical Indian artwork, and you'll find a flaw in every piece. It's a tribal expression of humility. Embrace your flaws, because they create strengths in other areas. There are some hard to reach areas in a 4G63, but I'm really content with how this whole thing turned out. So smash that like button to show Detective Coding some love, subscribe if you want to stick around for the destructive testing, and check out my Patreon page if you want early access to my videos and to help my channel grow. I'm gaining momentum on my other projects, and I'll be bringing them to you soon. Until then, stay tubed.